Oh man, telling you what a nasty, nasty day today. I don't know if you can hear this wind. I got a pond starting out in my backyard again. I wonder if it's safe to go down to the guitar dungeon and uh, get something on the bench. Talk to you later. How you doing, folks? Welcome to another exciting episode of On the Bench. Uh, you know, late last year, I decided that I was going to try to learn how to play some jazz. And uh, I broke out this old guitar that I have, made by Court. And it's kind of got that cool old thin line, single pickup jazz sound to it. And uh, it plays well, it plays marvelous and sounds marvelous. A little out of tune right now. I need to put some new strings on it and this has a floating bridge, which means when I take the strings off, that bridge is gonna come off. So I'd like to do two things today. Once, show you how to uh, string one of these up um, and not have to move the bridge. And another way, way I'd like to do it is show you how you can take that bridge off, clean this guitar up really good, and then reposition that bridge so the intonation and everything's correct. I'm sure that's something that uh, you're going to want to you're going to want to see. So stick around, folks. Now this Jim Triggs model, I bought, I believe, at eBay, if I'm correct, in about 2001 or 2002. I think it's a 98 model. We'll take a look at the serial number in a minute. Maple top, maple sides, maple back, maple neck. All gold hardware. These are mighty, mighty might humbucker pickups. I noticed when I was uh, looking it over, maybe we can get a look in here later. Uh, the pots are all the big, big size pots. Looks like it's a 98 model, made in February. I think they made these things from 98 to 2002 or 2004. It's a semi hollow body with a 24 and 3 quarter inch scale. Very Gibson-y. The neck, if I can get you a good side of that. I mean, it doesn't just fill your hand up completely, but it sure isn't a, it's not like a modern neck. The binding on it's just absolutely wonderful. Now, if you're afraid of this moving on you, you can always go get you some painter's tape. I always keep this on the bench because it really it won't mar your finish. Okay? And you can just put some tape on either side of it like that. And then when you take your strings off, you don't have to worry about it moving. Now, this has got a trapeze style bridge on it. Certainly hope I have this camera adjusted so you can see it. Pretty high tech here at Sippy Rock. This has got a trapeze style bridge on it. And when this comes loose, all these strings come loose, this is going to hit your finish. So you're going to want to do something to protect that.
I'm going to get these strings off. I'll be right back. I will tell you a little bit about this guitar while I'm taking the strings off. Court is a uh, Korean based company and they kind of their claim to fame and they've been around since the 60s folks but their real claim to fame is they make guitars for other companies such as uh, Squire, G&L and Ibanez usually the lower end models the least expensive ones and I've always thought they do quite a good job I've got a couple of different Squire uh, guitars Got a Squire bass that's just wonderful. I'm trying to get the string off without knocking my camera off. Jim Triggs was a master luthier at Gibson at one time. And uh, I don't know, since like the 80s, he's had his own shop. and He's made guitars for people like Alan Jackson, Steve Miller. All right, folks, I'm going to, while I got this thing down, I'm going to go ahead and clean it. And um, I'm going to go ahead and clean the guitar. I'm going to oil the neck. That's another whole video. You don't really want to see that right now and make sure everything's tight on it. So hang in there, I'll be right back. Folks, I was gonna go ahead and take this, uh, this bridge off here, but before I did, I wanted you to see something. You notice how this slopes down that way, at an angle that way? Might come in handy if you take that thing off to know which way know which way it was this guitar and I've never I have obviously haven't had it off before actually has a bridge line on it see this little tag right here so like I was saying folks this is the uh, court Jim Triggs model I made this from 98 to I think 2004 Jim Triggs worked in some sort of partnership with them and designed this one. Uh, I think they sold for around $600 when they came out in 98. Maple top, maple back and sides, maple neck, rosewood fingerboard. Uh, I think it's 22 frets. They came out in two colors. They called this Robin Egg Blue. It looks kind of turquoise to me. And uh, kind of a Gretsch Orange was the other one. Now, I have read places on the internet that they did them all in the orange. It was a transparent orange and then later started painting over the orange and doing the robin egg blue. I don't know if I believe that or not. I don't see any evidence that this guitar had any orange on it. Now when I bought it in the early 2000s, I think it might have been 2002, I bought it on eBay from some gal in Texas and her boyfriend bought it for her as a gift and uh, she was in a rockabilly band and she really needed something with a Bigsby and two pickups and I was playing in a blues band at the time and I thought how marvelous it'd be to have this guitar so I bought it and I don't have any records I didn't really keep records back then so I can't tell you what I paid for it and I don't know that eBay could tell me a 
let me get this thing uh, cleaned up and we'll start restringing her. Hmm, I wonder if I can find strings here. Well, I'm not going to put a whole lot of effort into this because I think I did this last year when I uh, restrung it. However, since I got it down, I might as well go ahead and just polish each, each one of these. And again, folks, when I do that, your pickup is, does have a magnet in it. And you want to kind of tape it off, cover it up, and kind of my controls. That way I don't have to worry about any of this dust getting down in there. I try not to even use a fan if I can keep from doing it because I just don't want it blowing around in the air. So if you came to watch this video about how to reset the bridge, we're going to do that in a moment. We've done everything but that so far. I just... Like I said, folks, you know, when you got them apart, you might as well go ahead and and do everything. I'll make sure all these nuts here are tightened up. Oh, I got these things here. You, they're, they're little protectors, just so you don't dig into your wood too much. If that was your guitar, I probably would have went ahead and put tape around each one of them. You know, took a little extra time. But I've had this old girl quite a while. She doesn't, she doesn't mind that one bit. I'm going to go ahead and finish cleaning this thing up. But I did want to show you one other thing. On these electric guitars, and it seems like there are more problems with these hollow body, semi hollow body. This thing here, if you turn it, that gets loose, you got a problem on your hands. Now I know I can, re, I can get one back in there before. I've done that. It's not fun, but I can do it. But if you go tighten these, you know, and because it's loose and you just keep tightening it and keep tightening it, if you're not paying attention, you're probably taking that input jack in there and you're probably whirling him around and pretty soon he's going to break off a wire. And then you're going to be bringing him over to my house and paying me more money than what you think you want to pay for me to put that back in there. Just a little tip to the wise. Let me get a drink of water here. Where have I put my water? Another little tip. This guitar's got buttons on it here. And I'm, I'm not telling you to, please don't over tighten them. But you may want to make sure that at least they're, they're snug. Okay. Just one of the other little things we do whenever we're, you know. going through something this extreme on a on a guitar and not just a simple string change you know when I'm doing a full washing and waxing getting about ready to put this thing back on and since we're doing all the tips and tricks while you are oiling your neck you might want to just go ahead this little bridge here is made out of rosewood also and you might want to just rub a little bit of oil on that. It just kind of helps to keep it from drying out. I like to you know, do some around here because usually if you're going to have one break, it's typically it's going to crack somewhere along here. And it's not that they're impossible to replace. They can be replaced, and I've done such things before. But this is an arched top guitar. And... You may have a little bit of trouble finding a bridge that fits that arch just exactly the way that uh, this bridge here, the original bridge, did. And I am not a luthier. And so what I would have to do then, as best as I could, is just sand that down to get it to fit. That wouldn't be the kind of thing you necessarily want me working on for you. Not that I haven't done it before. you put this back together you have to be careful because it can you can get it jammed at an angle see how that one's even stuck up just a little bit now you heard it click right okay and the reason again why I mention that is if I don't oil that I let that continue to dry out 
not a big problem around here it's pretty humid but if this dries out and I get that in a little bit of a bind then you're, you're going to put stress on that and give an opportunity for that piece to crack well let's get her strung up well with this being the guts of the video let's go ahead and let's string this thing up I think some of my videos are a bit too long and exasperated. However, there we are. There it is. I actually cleaned this guitar up. Something like you bring your guitar over, I won't I won't clean it for you. You can do that yourself. Found my strings. GHS Boomers. You bring a guitar over to my house, that's what you're going to get. I don't make a dime off of this. This is what I buy. This is what I use. Unless you pay for the strings yourself and you've got an electric or a hollow body electric like this, that's what y'all's going to get. Now, here's what we're going to do here inspect this bridge one more time. Let me get this light see how bright I can get it right in my eyes. I'm going to inspect this one more time. Make sure everything's seated good. And you can see, just look at it, that, like I said, it looks like it kind of slopes that way. So it's going to go on here like this. That's going to be about the middle of the bridge. The middle of the bridge should be from here, the middle of this, should be 24 and 3 quarter inches. Holy snap, look at that. I mean, pretty close. So here's what we're going to do, folks. I'm going to put this thing on here, show you how you can put this back on. Again, make sure you got it in the right spot. We're going to put this thing back on here. I can probably see about where it was, but you'll line your, what I'm going to do is put a bass string on, and then a smaller string on and just get them enough tension I don't even know if you can see me here folks let's get the guitar down get this down here on the guitar instead of me I'm gonna get this on here and try to get enough tension on it so I can kinda of line these up on the neck okay and then we'll kinda of get my settings set for how high I want the action just a little bit just to get it in the ballpark um, I don't know if I'm going to take the time today to show you how to set up the action tube. We might talk about that. I'll definitely show you how to get the intonation set right so when you're playing up the neck, it doesn't sound like it's out of tune. We'll do that much, show you how to get this bridge set up and down and back and forth and to this angle the right direction. As far as adjusting the pickups, I think that's another video. Well, let's get it started here, okay? All right, let's get this thing strung up here, folks. Actually, I use GHS 10s. I've got a bunch of 9s in my shop for some unknown reason. Here's going to be the trick. The trick's going to be to get the string in here without it falling out, right? Maybe, maybe not. I think when you look at this trapeze bridge here it has a retainer so you're going to be in pretty good shape in that regard if it were a Bigsby we'd have a different problem on our hands let's see it looks like that's in there pretty snug pretty good Alright folks, I'm going to go ahead and get these two strings on here and we'll get this lined up. How do you do this, you know, when you, when you don't have five hands? And you make sure you get it in the right spot for one thing. I always keep little blocks of wood laying around the shop for this and that and something else. Usually they're left over from cigar box guitar cuttings.
<laughs> All right. So what I'm looking for here now, first of all, is make sure I'm in the right hole, and I'm not. Look at this. No, I'm in the right hole. I think I am. No, I'm not. Take two. Trying to get enough slack in this string here so we can... That's what they make these peg winders for, right? So we can get her out and get her in the right, in the right lug. And it should be one over here. I thought I was in the very far end one, but apparently I was not. Aha! So you see, and I'll just keep that, keep the tension on it right here. And then we'll wind her back up. So. Beautiful. Okay. So, let's make sure. You know, now I'm in the right right lugs. So let me uh, let me get this camera down here and we'll start repositioning things so you can see better. All right, here we are at the other end. You can kind of see where I'm at. There's the bridge line. Uh, and it's supposed to be right about in the middle of this bridge. So I'm going to put it right about in the middle of the bridge. Right there. Next thing I want to do is kind of take a look at these strings. Let me get all of my rigging here and see if you can come along with me. I want to line this out now, push this bridge back and forth and see if I can't line these strings out so they're pretty well evenly spaced, you know, so you don't have it all the way over here or all the way over there. Okay. Now the problem I have here, and I notice this, somehow that string has fallen back this way. It probably didn't, maybe it didn't get cut right or what we're going to do is we're going to line that up and I think that's Excuse me, folks. I think that's pretty well it right there. We do have a little gap here on this side. But I think that's pretty well it right there. And then once we do that, or now that we've done that, I'm going to go ahead and uh, let's get the strings on it. Okay, so you ask yourself, Sippy, how you supposed to get that string in there when you only got the two hands? Because I'll tell you what, once you get it in down here, and then you go to stick it in up here, it's going to drop out. And it's probably how I got this one here in the wrong hole in the first place. But, get this thing in here. Make sure it's in the right one. But you see what I've done? I've already got this. And I don't know if you can see what the angle I got. Let me pull it up a bit. I've already got the string pulled in here, and I'm just keeping the tension so it can't fall out. Now, that doesn't mean it won't fall out. It shouldn't. Like I said, I usually give about that much. And then, I think on this one here, I'm going to do the over the top. Kind of wrap like that. I still got my tension on it, see? And then I'm going to get my finger under that and make sure see I'm you still got the tension I don't know if you can see that or not that way I can control where this wrap goes if you haven't you should already have by now seen my other video on how to string a guitar up I just wanted to point out you know this is how you do that when you only got two hands Okay, folks, this is the $25 question here. It's how do you set the intonation? Let's not really worry about the action up and down yet. I'm not going to even worry about the pickup height. Let's set the intonation because I, I want it to function as a guitar should function. So, first of all, I want to tell you when you go to tune it, especially on something like this, uh, with this kind of bridge, you're going to tune it from this string to that one. Okay? And don't expect it to be in tune, folks. You're going to go back and, and do it again. You're going to do it at least three times and probably more, you know. But once you get it kind of close, here's the idea. 
I got me one of these tuners. This is what, what we use at our house. There's one of the ones we use. I've probably got two dozen tuners laying around here. And I don't make any money off these. I'm not saying they're a great tuner. I'm not saying they're a bad tuner. I'm saying this is what we got at the house. You probably got one at your house. I'm going to show you how you can set your intonation with one of these things. I'm going to strike the E. And when I do... When I do, it's going to come up to pitch. Then I'm going to hit it at the 12th note, 12th fret. And I want it to be at the same pitch. If it's under the E, like this, then I'm going to have to move my bridge this way a bit. If it's over the E, I'm going to have to move my, bri move my bridge that way a, a bit. So you just think the center line, you want it to be right here, smack dab in the middle when you tune it. You don't want it above it or below it. You want it right here. Tune it up till it's right here. Hit it at the 12th fret. And if it's below, bring that bridge this way just a little bit. If it's above, take it that way a little bit. If it's close, I'd leave it alone. Let's take a look at it from the other end where you can see the tuner. Hoping you can see it here, folks. Mm, man, that's right on. Maybe a little flat. Close. Alright, so I see what's going on there, and it looks like, to me, get everything turned back around here, this is what it looks like. If this bridge is pretty much spot on. When I get to the higher notes of the higher register here, the, uh, the, the G and the B and the, the E, they're all a little bit flat. Not much. I'm not sure if I'd really worry about it if it was my own guitar, but let's pretend it's yours. I'm going to just put my thumb right here, and I mean, an inch is a mile, buddy. An inch is a mile. Let's see what we got here. Just talking to you. Look at that. I know I own I own several of these tuners. got a lot to do with how hard you hit the note and you know I got some guitars I'll put one of these on and it won't even like I'll get to the low E and it won't even register it I'm just saying Man, I think I'm going to stretch these strings out and live with this puppy. Before I do, let's take a look at it. Hey, I want to really thank you all for spending some time with Sippy Rock today. If this is the kind of content that you enjoy and, and you're interested in, then 
I'd sure appreciate it if you give me a thumbs up today and, uh, you know, subscribe to the channel. Mm -hmm.